Didi Gregorius. He's the shortstop of the New York Yankees, one of the most iconic teams in sports history. He's hit the most home runs of any Yankee shortstop in a single season. But he's more than just a baseball player. He's adventurous. He's an artist. He knows five languages. He's even a knight. Yes, a real one. And that's just a few of the traits of today's passenger. Let's go for a ride with Sir Didi. Ready for this trip? Yeah, we're ready to go. Let's do it. <laughs> All right. I have never driven a night around before. This is a first. I'm a little nervous. <laughs> Whether it's swimming with sharks or like playing baseball in New York City, do you ever get nervous? No, not really, to be honest, no. There's no reason to put like pressure or something on top of yourself, you know, you know what you're capable of. It's not like, oh, I need to get this done, I need to do this, I need to do that. I mean, you know at some point you have to do it, so you gotta be mentally prepared for it. So the zip lining and the swimming with shark stuff. Cool with everything. Yeah, I mean, you just gotta go go there and do it because, I mean, you got one life, you know, you gotta enjoy it. So you gotta try to do something different every time. So, and that's what I do, try to learn some cultures and everywhere I go, so. It seems like everybody who I talk to, whether it's a fan or one of your teammates or a friend or something like that, everybody loves you. Have you ever met somebody who didn't like you? Yeah, a lot of people. <laughs> I want to meet them because you, you, you always bring off like good vibes and like positive energy. You're a dude that I feel like everybody gets attracted to just because of that I good mean, outlook that you have, you know? It's just like, uh, there's no reason for you to change. Uh, if you always be yourself, people accept that more, appreciate that more than try to be a different, whole different guy that you're not, you know? Mm -hmm. you're gonna, you can't keep that act up. So just try to, I try to be myself all the time. And then, I mean, if you don't like me, I, it's not my problem. I got nothing to do with that. It's, it's all on you, so. But for me, if I'm being myself, I mean, you can, they can judge me, they can do whatever they want, but there's no reason for me to change. Just how I was raised and experienced, I mean, all of because you learn something new every day. So, I mean, there's no reason for you to try to be stubborn and just not opening to anything what people say, because everybody sees the world a little bit different. So if you pick up here and there, you know, you appreciate life more. Yeah, it's the one thing that I've noticed over time is that if you just work hard and have a good, positive mindset, yeah. You just let things happen organically. Yeah, and the funny part is, because I don't always have a positive mindset, that's the thing. Sometimes, like, when I play baseball, I, I always think, like, the negative part, because it's a game of failure, and then you appreciate the positive stuff a little bit more than all the other stuff, but if I'm always positive and when I'm failing, and, like, I'm gonna kill myself for, for no reason, you know, so, like, it's a game of failure. You want to feel less, and, a way to find a way to improve and so that's why like every year you gotta I won't say like set goals because when you get to the goals then what you want to surpass it every year like you want to do something better every year you know like I don't know get on base more feel better like kind of like that to help the team so I think looking at it that way for me works way better than just okay this is my goal for the year I'm gonna do this I'm gonna do that and then I'm gonna be like, okay, so I got it, now what? That's why when people ask me, so what are your goals? I always say win a ring because that's what we play for. And that playing to get a ring means I gotta do good on base running, defense. I gotta do all of them good so we can get to that. I'm doing my part, then I pick up the other guys to do their part also, so, because it's a team sport. Like John Wooden says, it's about the journey than the end result. Yeah, exactly. So do you enjoy that type of stuff, like the motivational stuff? I know you're really active on Instagram, but yeah. like, do you follow those types of accounts? Yeah, I follow some types of them. And also, like, I like, because I talk to myself a lot. People think I'm crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but I talk to myself a lot. Like, sometimes you need yourself to motivate yourself. There's not every time, there's not somebody there that's going to motivate you, you know? So if I can motivate myself, and I'll be better through ups and downs and know how to improve, then I don't have to rely on somebody else to come and tell me something, hey, you remember you're the best guy at this, blah, blah, So and then I'll try to find a way. But I mean, if I talk to myself, motivate myself, then it's gonna be a lot easier. I won't say, well, not easier, but it's probably gonna be quicker. If you wanna get something done, it's ultimately up to yeah, you yourself. Yeah, it's up to you. You have to do it yourself. You gotta, I mean, just go out there and just do it by yourself. Like, hey, I need to get this done. 
I'm going at it right now. Get it done. You do a great job with showing your feelings mm -hmm. and staying composed. That's like a skill in itself, right? <laughs> I mean, you gotta control yourself. That's basically the main point. If even if you go crazy, don't go crazy. Where a lot of people can see. I mean, we all get pissed off. You know, you know it, it happens in the game. But you just try to keep the same face and just play the game the right way. You don't want to make mistakes. But when you do, all you gotta do is you know tap yourself on the shoulder. Hey, just let it go. You know, get the next one. I mean, there's stuff that happens because nobody's perfect in this game. Nobody's perfect in life. So, I mean, because if everybody has the same mentality, either everybody's going to be rich or everybody's going to be broke. But at the end of the day, how are you going to get rich? At the end of the day, how are you going to be broke? So, I mean, it's it's always like, because rich, a lot of people say rich is when you have a lot of money, you do this, you can do this, whatever you want. But for me, that's not rich because you're not doing something to other people, you know, like helping other people out. Like most of the guys from Kira, so that's what we do when we go back home. You know, we gotta, we try to help as much as we can. You know, you always gotta give back. You don't have to overdo it, but I mean, just give a little bit. You don't have to give a lot, just give a little bit. Just, just give something, you know, so. For me, it's just not about the money. Like I play baseball because I love the game. Like same thing, like they asked me, how much money you signed for? And I told him, I don't care about the money that I signed for. I care when I make it to the big leagues that I can help my family. You know, I'll be I'll be the first in the big leagues, but yeah, but if I can help my family with that, that's going to be way better than just making it and being selfish and not try to share or help my family out. That's one of the things. So you always got to know the families that has been there the whole time and not just showing up now when you're in the big leagues. Those are the things that also, like, change, change for a lot of people. I mean, especially in big markets too, or if it's a superstar player, all of a sudden people come out of the woodwork and you're like, wait, where where were you? Or when you were in the minors? Where were you when I was in the minor league? Like, kind of like that, yeah, exactly. When you were in the minors, mm -hmm. it was the Reds, and then it was the Diamondbacks, and now you're here in New York. Did you ever envision any of this? Just how everything's evolved so well. I mean, I won't say well, because if I say well, then I'm not gonna work, so. It's not, it's, it's, it's a process. You know, you always gotta work. Uh, like I said, like I tell everybody, I'm never satisfied with work because it could always be better. So I tell people that every time they'll look at me like I'm crazy, but I'm like, well, then I might be crazy because there's a lot of room to improve. So I never wanna sell, I never wanna be satisfied with what I'm doing right now because I wanna get some more, more work in to try to get better. I mean, it's not gonna be the best year of your career every year you play, but you always try to, try to like, you know, Try to keep higher, keep building, keep building because you can you can always learn. I think even the best players in the game are still learning the game. So did you say that one trait about you then is the reason why you like to kind of like explore and do all these different things, whether it's like trying to perfect your golf swing or artwork or you got the modeling thing down pretty well with yeah. Banana Republic. I mean like <laughs> Which is, again, why I call you Renaissance Man, and we haven't even mentioned that you know five different languages. Uh, but I mean, it's just just something, man. It's just like, okay, I gotta do this, so I gotta work on it. Like, everything I do, like, I wanna get better at it. Like, like me right now, playing golf, I'm not happy if I'm, you know, hit one in the water, I and mean, I go like, yeah, I don't, I'm not a golfer, so it can happen. No, I'm playing golf, so that means, right now, I'm a golfer in this situation, so, I should play the game right. I should learn how to hit it, hit it straight all the time, like stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So I'm always hard on myself. All right, so if you're playing miniature golf, mm. are you hard on yourself during miniature golf? Yeah, because I'm competing. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm playing against somebody, man, I gotta compete. It's, it's always like that. I mean, I can't just play against like, I just for fun. Even if you play for fun, at the end of the game, you'll be like, oh, I beat you. I mean, it's, it's just for fun, but you're still competing. So it's still something, you know, it's still something back there. Like people, a lot of people don't even think about it, but uh -huh. like, ah, let's, let's go like miniature golf and just play a little bit for fun. And then you'll be like, oh, like hole in one. And the guy hits a two, you'll be like, hey, I got you. Like, it, it's always something, it's always something. And then the other guy goes, all right, all right, so we're gonna, we're gonna really gonna compete? And then we, now you, before you know, you're competing. Or you guys competed and suddenly at the end of the day, you'll be like, oh, I'll beat you. It's always something. It's never just, oh, let's do this for fun. It's always competing. And here's a weird question. Do you get annoyed when you hear other people chew their food? 
Yes, I really get annoyed. I've... <laughs> I'll go with yes, I really get annoyed, like really, really annoyed. I don't know who told you that, but I really do. <laughs> Here's what I'm asking, because apparently people who get really annoyed by other people's chewing just means that they're very creative. Oh, guess, guess. That's this guy, saying. it's you. <laughs> I kind of hate it since I was a kid. That's the worst thing that can happen. <laughs> Uh, that's the big pet peeve. Yeah, that's what gets me. Like, I literally just walk away. Basically, I walk away or I don't even eat in there. That's why most of the time, I don't eat at the field. You eat at home? Yes. I eat at home. Like, even if I get food from the field, I'll wait till I get home and eat because I'll eat by myself. If there's somebody in the room who's eating and you can hear them chew, will you put music on or do anything? Most of the time, I have my headphones on. <laughs> Noise canceling headphones because I don't want to hear anything. Nah, it's a little bit too much for me. <laughs> now that we got that down in the whole nothing really makes you nervous, is there anything that you fear? <laughs> <laughs> what I fear is not not succeed. That's what I fear. Not giving it all. That's like what well, that's one I fear. Like what I fear. Because any day, anything can happen, so. That's why I always give it all my best, because you never know. Have you ever had any sort of experience that has kind of made you realize that more? I mean, when I got sent down to, to AAA with the Diamondbacks, but no valid reason, I think that's when, like, as I played my best in the, of the first year when I was with them. But I mean, like I said, always, like I always say, there's always room to improve. And then the next year, they're like, oh, we're going to send you down. So I was like, I mean, I need an explanation. I mean, what I did wrong? Did I do something wrong? And then no explanation, nothing. And it's like, all right, you got to go down into the AAA. And that was my first time actually being sent down. And I uh, went down there in AAA. I was like, well, right now, I don't care. I'm gonna, there's 29 other teams that can, you know, have a chance to look at me. So whoever knows what's going to happen. So I played down there, I gave it my best, and then I got called back up, and I barely played. And then determined to a utility guy I was playing second base, I was playing third base, playing short. I almost played the outfield, and then I was like, I don't know where this is going. Coming off the bench almost every time, I was hitting 180, probably 170, almost 200. And the last month in September, I got a chance to play, and then I hit two, what, 250, 260, 270, whatever I hit in that month in September. And then, Got me traded to the Yankees, so that's one of those things actually like I picked up on that's why I never look back because I'm not trying to look back, you know, so that's why I was trying to give it my best every time I go play a game because you never know what can happen again, you know, so yep. it's one of those things. I mean, you learn from the struggles. That's the thing, like, that's why I tell people, like, a guy that struggles can explain a lot to other people that, and then to a guy that has never struggled. Because if you never struggle, when you get in that situation, you don't know how to handle it sometimes. But I struggled early in my career. Like my first year, I hit 155, but I only played like, what, 40, 40 games or 50 games. That's my first time coming in the States and play. We don't really play a lot of games in Curacao. I'll learn from that because I told them the next year I'm going to be really good. And they all laughed at me. <laughs> and then I started doing really good the next year. I hit uh, 298, 298 the whole year round, playing like 80 games. And they were like, I think he's ready. And then. Got called, uh, got called up the next year to low A, and I played 120 something games. Did fine, 120, and then kept going, kept going, and made it to the big leagues five years after. That laugh probably gave you such motivation too, right? I mean, it's just like it's just the way people are. I mean, I mean, no matter what, there's always somebody that's gonna judge you. Mm -hmm. You can do everything right. There's still somebody's gonna judge you. You can do anything in your life. There's always somebody that has something to say, which is life because we're humans. And then once you understand that, you don't have to worry about that. And then just do what you gotta do. Just get the job done and just just go with that. You know, just the way you gotta enjoy life. Instead of beating around the bushes, you know, just go straight to the point and see what you gotta do. And just get better. So if you had one piece of advice to give to anybody, uh, whether they're young or old or anything, based on all of your experiences, whether it's travel, 
or career wise like what like what's the one uh, piece of advice that you'd give somebody like as a kid like as we always do the clinics but going this is what i tell them like you guys like love baseball blah blah, blah. you guys want to make it to the big leagues yeah everybody's screaming yeah i said what about the school you want to finish school first and then you hear that sound because all they think about is just baseball baseball that's when i break down the real story not a lot of guys that sign makes it to the big leagues and the guys that don't have a degree to go back on they need to find a job that's probably not going to pay them as much because they don't have that degree mm-hmm. and then so for me the key is finish school because i waited a year to finish my school to sign and so why can't you but if you go from different countries it's a little different you know, different i mean every place has it differently mm-hmm. but the degree at the end of the day it's the most important part i mean if you don't make it if you and any injury can end your career and then what are you going to do now i mean if you're like older you're done with school and everything i mean if you want to play professional baseball you got to Make sure you're gonna stay committed and do 100% and give it 110. I mean, as long as you do that, also, I think you're gonna be fine. So it's just up to you how much you want to learn, how much you want to sacrifice to be there every day. Traveling, I mean, if you're up to traveling, is just know the spots and where you want to go and take a lot of pictures and make that uncomfortable zone your zone. It's the same thing when you play baseball. You're not always comfortable. You don't always feel comfortable, but. I mean, I have to make it work, otherwise I will not be here. So even if you get outside of the comfort zone, make it come. Be like, be confident. This is my, this is myself. This is how I'm going to do it. This is how I'm going to handle it and go from there. There's a lot of times people tell you can't do this, you can't do that. But at the end of the day, you're going to let that define you or you're going to go out there and work and then show yourself what you can do because you don't have to show the other people because they already doubted you. Why do you have to prove them? Mm-hmm. You got to prove yourself that you know what you're doing. So that's how I always been about it. That's how I always looked about it, about life and everything. So just do something out of the comfort zone and try to get ready. Damn. Well, thank you for the motivation, <laughs> inspiration. I'm going to probably go work out. I'll probably not sleep the rest of the night So I'm going to work on my craft and edit all night. <laughs> Uh, I might do my some video graphics today too because I'm gonna need to finish my city that I'm working on. Oh man, thanks. <laughs> mm-hmm.